and that we really emphasize that. And there are countless examples where we need to be really careful of life and which are not morally problematic in that kind of way. Like, for example, not killing animals for food. In 90% in of cases, it's, nobody needs food and there's not a problem there and it's, and it's very beneficial to, to not do that. So, so it's important to focus on those, those major issues. Now, having, having said that, and when we come to those borderline cases, I mean, the first thing that we have to admit is that, well, we can't be 100% certain of anything, okay? So we have to admit, <coughs> admit a certain uh, humility in, in discussing those things. Um, from a Buddhist perspective, or from the, the textual perspective, then yes, it, uh, the, the, the suttas say that, that consciousness arrives as at the time of conception, okay? that the notion of the time of conception is, is um, fairly, you know, fairly, fairly basic. It's not, doesn't go into sort of, you know, a lot of detail as the kind of the actual biological happenings. And as you know, from a biological perspective, it actually takes a substantial period of time. Even the fusion of the sperm and the egg takes, you know, many hours to actually to take place. So there's not like a moment of conception in that sense. We think of like a period of time. And uh, uh, so, in some way, we can think of consciousness, in some sense, as being uh, involved with that process in some kind of sense. But we can also think of a, 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 a gradation and, and, a, and a, um, a sequence of involvement. Or a, 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 just, just, to, just to give an example, I mean, to the example that works for me to, un to understand this is just to think of moving home. Okay? And uh, this is actually quite... The, the Buddhist term for rebirth, one of the terms is, is, a, is, a, is a home. Okay, nivasa is just like a home. So, so, so getting reborn is like moving homes. And the, the simile that the Buddha gave for rebirth was like a person who walks out of one house, walks down the street, and then walks into another house. So it's actually quite a concrete kind of metaphor. But if we think about what actually happens when you move home, you know, first of all, there's a, a kind of... The first thing that happens is an intimation that somehow you're going to have to leave the place where you are now. So when that first thought, then there's, there's a sense of... There's a slight disengaging with the place where you are now. And that might happen in our lives. That happens from the first time we, we become aware that we're mortal. Okay? So the first time we become aware that we're mortal, our consciousness is not 100% totally committed and identified with our physical body in this thing. And there's a sense of slight disengagement. Then if you're moving home again, then maybe it comes from a point of not merely just slight disengagement from that, but like an active consideration of where you're going to move to. So your mind starts to think about other places, possibilities. And then maybe you physically go and visit those places. You go and start looking around, hunting different suburbs, different places. Visit some houses. Maybe you find one that you like. You actually go and visit it. Okay, so you're physically in there. And you think, okay, I'll come away. I'll think about it for a while. Maybe you go back and forth a few times to visit, check it out. Then you have discussions with the real estate agent. You sign a contract. Or you think about a contract, negotiate the contract, and so on. Then you sign it, and then there's a date put when you're going to actually move in. Yeah, money is transferred. Eventually, you sort of you get to move in, and then you move all your furniture in. Gradually, move your furniture in, and then once you've moved your furniture in, of course, half of it stays in boxes. Like as we were saying the other day, it might stay in boxes for 15 years or something like that, and it hasn't actually been unpacked. And then you gradually get around to painting the house the colours that you want fixing up the bits that you want, making renovations and changes and so on. So you ask, well, when is the moment that you actually moved into the home? Okay, so the, 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 the point is, well, actually, there's a very, very long... You can arbitrarily choose one point. You can say, well, it's when you sign the contract. It's when you hand over the money. It's when you step over the threshold. But actually, what's happening is a very complex process. And I think we can say the same thing with, from, from a Buddhist perspective with that notion of, of, of being conce conception, is that in some way which the Buddhist texts don't really define or clarify all that much, but in some way, or at least the early Buddhist texts, uh, that, they, that the, the consciousness is 
involved in some sense with, with the embryo from, from a very early stage or from the stage of conception, but, but that the, the degree of commitment and the degree of investment in that grows exponentially as, as the embryo uh, grows and matures. And it talks about this quite uh, explicitly in the text. It talks about the consciousness is wooding we ruling we pulang, the growth, maturity, and, and um, uh, um, ripening of, of the, the consciousness, which is talking about that, that whole ongoing process. So you can see from that perspective, well, you know, let's say if you were to, to be interrupted, so now we think about what's right and wrong, okay? So we think of that whole process from the first time you saw your new ho house, right? First time you saw your new house and you thought, oh, that's quite nice. And then you went back there the next day and then somebody else had already bought it, okay? Now you might feel a kind of a mild sense of disappointment, right? Now, of course, if you take that all, all the way up the process, then, of course, if you negotiated with the real estate agent and you thought there was a pretty good chance you're going to buy it, but then someone slipped in with a better offer and you lost it, then you might feel very disappointed. You might even feel betrayed. Yeah? On the other hand, if you'd actually signed the contract and you moved in and then you found out that developers had done something and they were going to bulldoze it, then you'd feel really ripped off yeah? and you'd probably take them to court. If you found that you'd actually moved in already and raised a family there, and then the developers were going to put a bulldozer through it, you'd feel like your life was just devastated and destroyed. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a spectrum of involvement which actually determines your level of psychological anguish and pain that you're going to suffer regarding that house, depending on how deeply your consciousness is actually embedded in that place. And so the same thing happens with conception and with the growth of the embryo, that, that there's a psychological process of attachment, development of attachment, and, and em, 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 embodiment. And at the beginning, you know, again, the same kind of thing, that, that, that the consciousness that, that's there when there's only a few cells, if those few cells were to be killed or were to die, then, then the consciousness would, it's fairly light. It would, it would detach from that fairly easily. It hasn't got much investment in that. And it also, of course, doesn't have any nervous system and so on to feel pain. So whatever kind of consciousness there would be there at that time, it would be very dim and almost un, un, like an unconscious consciousness in a sense, like a sort of a deep state of, 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 of dreamless state, sleep or unconscious. And so that, that being would, would, would hardly have any memory or awareness of the fact that it had taken rebirth in that way and that that rebirth had ended. There would be very little pain involved for that particular being, not saying none, but, but relatively very little. And of course, as time goes on, then that would increase greater, to a greater and greater degree. So this is, that, was, that would be the approach that I would take from a Buddhist perspective towards abortion and, and similar issues. Is, and I think you know, we, to, to keep a middle way, uh, not from a kind of a, a very reductionist perspective that says that a, an embryo and a fetus has no moral value whatsoever. I think that's an extreme position. And I think also the, the position that, that uh, you know, just a, a newly fertilized egg is a person with all the rights of, 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 of you or I, and that to kill it is murder. I think this is another extreme position.